Yeah, um, it's like the third time I try to record this video. But, uh, you know, I don't know what's going on. I think a lot of doubt is the demons. These demons is behind it. But um, it's the brother of Bakalak, Shalawan, Slakio, Shalawan, Shalawan, Israel. The brother of Bakalak, Wallam. Here with a hopeful, edifying video to the body of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. First and foremost, I will give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai Bashim Rekakadash. And double honors to the apostles and elders um, that I learned the truth from. The men of GMS and the brethren with the like minded doctrine. And I want to say Shalom to the Akim and to the Aqua. I'm basically trying to make a response to um, the elder from South Carolina. Yeah, I put a video together and it was and it names on um, Sneaky Hamite Christian Hurt by the Truth. You know, basically they, they was upset about the 12, 12 um the 12 um, tribes um, sign, the 12, 12 sign, 12 Salaki, 12 sign, 12 tribes sign Salaki. And he was upset that, you know, that there's no other nation that could be saved, and that's according to the word. So right here I have a book. It's called um, from, G from Jesus to Christianity, you know, written by L. Michael White. I just want to get a depiction of this guy to see like what he this is the, this is this is who this guy is. Perceived to me to be a Edomite. You we'll know, read a little bit little bit of it about it. At the bottom it says L. Michael White. It's lucky I gotta go back. Says L. Michael White. I think that's his pen name. Is um Randall Nel Nelson Wilson. I meant Salaki. Randall Nelson Smith, chair of Classic and Christian Origins, and is the it and is the director of the Institute for the Study of of Antiquity and Christian origins at the University of Texas at Austin. So that's all I'm gonna get, you know. That that's his pen name is on uh, L. Michael White. But you know, perceived to be this guy perceived to be a Edomite. So uh, I'm gonna just read a little bit what he has here and this section of the book is um is, is this section is called um chapter is called um, Judaism in the Diaspora. So we're going to read it and get some scriptures out, you know. And it reads here, it said, the Greek term of uh, Diaspora means scattering or dispersion. It refers to the Jews. See, it refers to the Jews who lived outside the homeland. The homeland is Jerusalem, effectively beginning with those Judeans who were taken away to exile into Babylon. Although many of their descendants eventually returned home, others did not. The Babylonian Jews, Jewish community, it's like it. Sometimes I gotta go back. The Babylonian, the Babylonian Jewish community continue to be very important down through the end of the late antiquity. It says the real diffusion of Jewish roots began during the Hellenistic period. So we're gonna get into what that what the word diffusion means. I know what it means. Diffusion means on um, scattering. So they basically saying the real scattering of the Jews, the Jewish group didn't begin begin during the Hellenistic period. We're gonna get the definition of Hellenistic too. Let's 
see y'all. Confusion means, see, the spreading of something more widely. So the, it didn't spread widely, Hellenistic period. You know, that's what diffusion means, the spreading of something. Just to let you know where I was at, the spreading of something more widely. So we're going to go back to the camera. And then we're going to go into, so we're going to go back to the camera and get the definition of Hellenistic. See the um see right here this is on Slaki, this is in the Zonder Zonder Zondervan Compact Dictionary the Zondervan Compact Dictionary so I can saw the Zondervan Compact Dictionary and we looking for the word Hellenistic. See it says there once we focus in. Say Hellenistic. Hellenist Slaki. So Hellenist says Jews who made who made Greek their tongue and with it often adopted Greek ideals and practices so that the Hellenists or the Hellenistics are Jews who made Greek their tongue which is their language and with it often adopted Greek ideals and Greek Greek ideals and practices so that's what Hellenists is are Jews um, Taking on the customs of the of the Greeks or the heathen. So that's what we, what we was reading. What we was reading there. So I'm gonna go back here and it says starting right here, it says the real diffusion, which is um, scattering, scattering wide of the Jewish group. Which is that the Jews began during the Hellenistic period. See, the Hellenistic are the Jews who who adopted Greek customs. So I can my bring this camera back up. By the time of the Roman Empire, there were Jewish encaves in virtually all parts. Of the Mediterranean world, so we gonna get, look up that word in cage and see what that means. We gonna get the word what in cage means. NK means, we'll get the second definition. Enclave. Enclave means a place, the second definition, a place or group that is different in character from those surrounding it. So that's the NK that we're talking about was the Hellenistic Jews or the Jews that took on the customs of the Greeks or the customs or the heathen that's round about them. You know, so, um, you no, know, the enclave, that's what it says in the, um, here. Go back to the, so we know what enclave means. Uh, a different, it's like a, a place or a group that is different in character from those surrounding it. So these was the Jews, the Jewish enclave that was different from the original Greeks, the, the real, the so-called, the Greeks, or uh, the heathen that it was in there. So I'm gonna read that again, starting at, uh, where it says, by, by the time of the Roman Empire, there were Jewish enclaves in virtually all parts 
of the Mediterranean world. So there was different, there was Jewish um, groups. There were Jews, a group of Jews in, all, in virtually all parts of the Mediterranean where they were scattered. We're going to get that out of the scriptures too. See, they were scattered just like um, Yahweh said he was going to scatter our people. So we're going to go here to um, select it. We gonna go here to uh, I might have hit the Old Testament. I'm at the other app. And Ezekiel. Ezekiel eleven and sixteen. Ezekiel 11 and 16 it reads therefore say thus saith Yahweh power although I have cast them far off among the heathen and although I have scattered them among the countries Yet I will be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries where they have, where they shall come. So, you know, that's that diaspora, the Amislaki diaspora, which, you know, that's what the, the Yahweh, Yahweh did to our people, did to us. He scattered us, you know, among the heathen. Now, I want to also get it out of, um, go to the 36th chapter, Ezekiel in the 36th chapter. And the 19th verse, Ezekiel 36, chapter 19 verse, and it reads, And I scattered them among the heathen, and they were dispersed through the countries according to their ways and according to their doings. I judged them. So that's what we're talking about. That's what the Howard did to us for, for disobeying the law, statutes, and commandments. He scattered us among the nations, among the heathen. Um, I want to also get it out of um, told it. I like it. I told it on um, the thirteenth cha chapter. Thirteenth chapter and fifth verse through the fifth, it says, "Confess him before the Gentiles, ye children of Israel, for he has scattered us among them." You know, that's what it said. Confess him before the Gentiles, ye children of Israel, for he has scattered us among them. So Yahweh, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shah scattered us. Yahweh scattered us among the heathen. And I'm going to continue reading about this book. You know, just clarification that these Gentiles are. Uh, or Hellenists, which is the same thing as Gentiles, this pertains to the Jews, the group of Jews that were dispersed in these different countries, these various countries. See, I'm going to read it again, starting by right, it says, by the, by the time, by the time of the Roman Empire, there was Jewish enclaves, which is a group that was different from the people living there, this Jew, this group of Jews that was different from the rest of the people in virtually all parts of the Mediterranean world. The most populous were in Egypt was that Hamite was, you know, he's from, she's a Hamite, she's from um, so-called Africa, especially in Alex Alexandria, which had an estimated Jewish population of nearly a hundred thousand. Rome also was said to have this many Jews in the imperial in the imperial period. Even if these numbers were numbers are rather exaggerated 
they point to the fact that increasingly increasingly Jewish groups were choosing was choosing to live outside their homeland which was Jerusalem by the middle second century CE after the failure of the two revolts against Rome it may well be the case that the vast majority of the Jews like it. that the vast majority of the Jews lived in the, the diaspora I'm going to read on this says um, although Rome generally tolerated its Jewish residents and granted and granted their rights things were not always so serene or so pleasant in the 19 in, in 19 CE for example the emperor Tiberius expelled at least some of the Jews from Rome the case which is reported in some detail by Josephus is instructive instructive for understanding both the treatment of Jews and the Jewish thought of the diaspora and the Jewish thought in the in the diaspora according to Josephus the Jews were expelled at the same time as the cult of Isis and for similar reasons says for similar reasons and for similar reasons in the case of Isis cult some of his priests has been implicated in helping arrange the scandalous sexual liaison involving the wife says sexual liaison involving the wife of a aristocratic aristocratic Roman citizen mm -hmm. in the case of the Jews Josephus claims that the perpetrators were renegade Jews who conned a wealthy Roman matron a recent proselyte i.e. for example Gentile con convert to J Judaism so that 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 this wealthy mat matron matron we're going to find out what that word means I know it means some some of a uh, uh, some type of um, I think some type of female uh, lady of some type of high status or something like that I might be pronouncing it right I'm at pronouncing it wrong Matron says a woman in charge of domestic or medical arrangements at a, a boarding school or other establishment, a female prison officer, a married woman, especially a dignified and sober middle-aged woman. So I think it's on the, the second verse. I think it's a married woman, especially a dignified and sober middle-aged woman. So basically, it's a, it's, a, it's a lady, you know, so a lady, middle way, it's, it's a lady, so, um, it says, 
says she was wealthy. Uh, the Jews who conned a wealthy Roman matron, a recent proselyte, example, Gentile convert to Judaism. So the Gentile, that Gentile was a Hellenist, you know, the Jews that was on um, a Jew that, you know, that were Hellenized or going on or um, taking on the custom of, of the Greek or whatever, um, whatever, whatever, whatever heathen nation that, that they came, that they came into, whatever heathen country that they came into and to giving them money. Ostensibly, the money was a contribution towards the temple in Jerusalem. See, they, she was just paying alms, you know, and then they tried to say she was, she, they conned her out of money. You know, this is a cut. It's our custom. It was a law, you know, to pay arms, and she was just obeying the customs and the laws of the uh, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, giving um, arms. When it was discovered, they had kept the money for themselves. The emperor expelled the entire Jewish community from the city and conscripted. 4,000 Jew, Jewish men into the, into the army. So I'm trying to see there did, uh, I guess, I'm not sure how that came about. But um, I guess they said they kept the money for themselves. But um, in both cases, there seems to have been some concern over Some concern over over the proselytizing proselytizing is that's converting you know Gentile being converted uh, uh, a Hellenistic Jew being converted back to um, the law statutes and commandments of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai in both cases there seem to have been some concerns over proselytizing proselytizing Roman citizens particularly women even so it is not likely that all of the Jews actually left greater Rome and certainly not all of Italy for only 30 years later in 49 CE the Emperor Claudius once again expelled from Rome Jews who were created disturbance at the instig instigation of a certain uh, Christ Christus Christus this, this case has been much discussed because of the name uh, Christus which can easily be understood as a misinterpret mispronunciation of Christus, which is which is means Messiah, the anointed. So I guess they were saying they was making disturbance over this one guy, but they were in actuality the disturbance was because of um, the Mamashiach, which in Greek is called Christus. And they just got it confused or whatever. Spocky. Some have um, suggested that the disturbance were, de were debates between Jews and the Christians. So you know the um, they say the um, the Jews are the Hellenistic, the um, you know the Hellenistic Jews. And the Christian, which was the followers of Hamashiach, that's where it's a, that's the community of Jews within the Jewish community of Rome. See, that was Jews of the community, the Jews, the Jewish community of the, the or the Jewish or the Jew group that was in Rome. So they was all Jews. You know, the Jews, the Hellenistic Jews that didn't know there was on. Um, 
that they were Jews and the Christians, which was the followers, the ones that knew the circumcised, the ones that knew there was um knew there was followers of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. You know, there was a disturbance between the two groups. So, um, I think I'm going to read a little bit more. And it says, some have suggested that, oh look, there is no direct, Salakia, there is no direct evidence to support this support this idea so I can there is no direct evidence to, to support this idea according to Acts 18 1 through 9 when Paul first met with the missionary missionary couple When Paul first met with a missionary couple, Priscilla, Priscilla Persisca and uh, Aquila in uh, Corinth, they had recently come from Rome because of this um, expulsion when they was expelled. So we're going to get that in Acts 18 and 1. We're going to get that. See the account of Acts 18 and 1 and see what, um, what was said there. See Acts 18 and 1 and reads, If these... If these things Paul departed from Athens, Athens and came into Corinth and found a certain Jew named Aquila. See, that was the Aquila, they was on it was Jews. All Jews born in Pontus lately came from Italy with his wife Paris Parasilla. Priscilla Salakia because of uh, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome. See there? That was the whole all the Jews, the Hellenistic Jews and, and the circle and the followers of Hamashiach. Yahweh Basim Yahweh Shah. And came into them. And because he was and because he was of the same craft. He abode with them in wrath. For the, for they for by their occupation they were tent makers. And he reasoned in the synagogues every Sabbath and persuaded Jews and the Greeks. See that, that Greek means Hellenistic. You know, we're gonna get into it. See what what um what that what Greek means. It's like it. See, it says Helen. Strong's G, 1672. Helene. Helene. Uh, Helene. See, we're going to go here to... Uh, you know what Hellene means? Hellene means Grecian. A strong definition. Hellene means basically Hellenistic or Grecian. The, uh, you know, says a Helen, Grecian, or inhabitants of Hellas. So basically, you know, the Greek means Helen, a Hellenistic or uh, Hellenistic Jew. That we already covered that, you know, the Jews that, um, the Jews who cover the Jews who converted I mean the yeah the Jews who converted to the uh, customs of the Greeks so we already went into the definition of that and 
I want to also get out of um, out of X. I'm gonna go back to X six and one just to get more clarification because you know I, I basically the point should be on um, me, but we won't get more more scriptures. Um, just to, just for more edification. I'm gonna go to Acts six. Acts six and one, and it reads, and then and in those days, for the number of the uh, disciples, slacky, we start over. And in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmur, murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because of their widows were neglected in their daily uh, ministration. See, that told that tell you what, you know, it was Grecians means we're going to go into it against the Hebrews, against the regular, um, against the, the Jews that knew there was Jews. And let me read this um, New Living Translation. But as the believers rapidly multiplied, there was a rumbling of discontent the Greek speaking believers complained about the Hebrew speaking believers saying that there was saying that their widows were being discriminated against in the daily distribution of food so we're going to go into this um, so that, that we got in the, um, see, got in the definition of Hellenistic it was Jew speaking Jew, Jew speak, um, um, Jews taking on the language of the Greeks. So that was the um, where it says in the other translation, it was the, you know, the believers that were speaking the Jew, speaking um, Greek, Greek. So we can go into Grecian. See Grecian in the translation, the Hellenistic. Strong's G, 1675. Hellenist. 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 See, and it says a Hellenist. See, we already went into the definition in the um, Zondervan Compact Dictionary that describe that um, basically, you know, that tells you what Hellenist means. A Jew taking on the language and custom of the Greek. So that was a Hellenist. See, and it says here, a Hellenist, a Hellenist or Greek-speaking Jew, Grecian. See, that's what it is. It's the same definition in um, a Hellenist or Greek-speaking Jew, Grecian. So, um, so basically, that 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 um, that sums up what all who 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 the Gentiles were, the Gentiles that were dispersed. In all four corners of the earth, that we got that, you know, and um, account in Tobit, account in Ezekiel, with the Most High scattered us among the heathen, among these all different these different countries, you know, that was the um, during the uh, diaspora, which you know that was the, the called the scattering, that was the Greeks that were scattering into all different countries, you know, with Yahweh Basim Yahweh Shai Yahweh done to our people, you know. So that's the that's the Greek, you know, that's the um, oh that's the um Gentiles that the Bible is talking about. It's not talking about no other, no other nation of people, you know. I could go on because it says it also says in the book other Jewish enclaves experienced per sporadic persecution. By their pagan neighbors, which is the Romans, you know, they was experience, experiencing experiencing persecution by the um, by the Romans. But you know, the Romans were um were pagan. So it says that right here. It says, other Jewish, we're going to start down here. It says, other Jewish enclaves, the enclaves is, you know, a group different than, 
you know, the, the, um, then the, uh, a group that's different than, than the surrounding people, you know, the scattering. It says the other Jewish enclaves experienced sporadic persecution by their pagan neighbors, you know, which is the, the Romans or the Grecians. One case occurred in Antioch in, in the mid 40s CE. You know? And you go to, uh, into Caliglia, all these different Roman emperors. You can go here too. It says the Jewish community responded by sending a delegation to Rome to appeal directly to the Emperor Calig Calig Caligula. You know, and it, it goes into the history of, um, you know, because um, I guess they was being accused and they was had appealed to the Roman Emperor. You know, it's just a bit of history there, uh, the killing of uh, Claudius. So, um, I'm trying to see if I need to get I also want to get this too. Probably done lost the page. Rocky. Yeah, um, so like, I want to get this, um, account out of the, out of, um, oh, I'm so like, I forgot about the letters. I'm about to forget about that. Uh, what the, who these epistles was, epistles means letter. Who these epistles or letters was, um, directed to. So we're going to go to Acts 15, Salakia. So I'm about to forget about that, the um, letters, Acts 15, hope this lesson ain't too long, and 23, uh, we're going to start at um, 21, and uh, it reads, um, let me get it out of this one, so I can Acts 15 and 23. Right, it's like it. Acts 15 and 21. And it reads, For Moses of old time had, hath in every city them that preach him, being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. Then, then pleased it the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, surnamed Barnabas, and, si and Silas, chief men among the brethren. So we're going to stop there and get who are the brethren. According to the Bible, who are the brethren? We're going to go to um, Romans 9. We can go to Romans 9 and get out and find out who's the brethren. Who's the brethren? Romans 9 and 1. And it reads starting at the top. I say the truth in Hamashiach, I lie not. My conscience also bear me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I wish I, it's like you, for I, could wish myself were a curse for Hamashiach 
for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites. See, that's who that brethren is. There's kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to who pertaineth the adoption, the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the service of, of Yahweh, and the promises. You know, so we all made a uh, clarification who that brother, who the brethren is. My kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites. Now we're gonna go back to um, Acts, Acts fifteen, to get clarification who the brethren is. Acts fifteen and twenty three. We're gonna start at twenty two. And pleased that the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, surnamed Barnabas, and Silas, Silas, chief men among the brethren, which is who? Israelites. And they wrote letters by them after this manner. This is how they wrote the letters. Was the epistles, the epistles of Paul, for example. All the letters that pertain the Hebrew, the epistles, the book of the, the you know the letter the, the, the letters of Hebrew, you know the, the 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 letters of Rome, the epistles of Rome. All of these epistles was written this way. So likely I'm gonna read back, and they wrote letters by them after this manner that the apostles and elders and brethren sent greetings unto the brethren, which are of the Gentiles. See. Of the Gentiles, that Hellenistic, these Hellenistic Jews, in Antioch and in um, um, Syria and Cilicia. So that that is that's this clarification that these letters or epistles, epistles was written to the to the brethren, which are all Israelites, which are Hellenistic, you know, who are of the Jews. Read that back over. Uh, Acts 15 and 23, and he wrote letters by them after this manner. The apostles and elders and brethren send greetings unto, unto the brethren, which are of the Gentiles, which are the Hellenistic Jews, in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia. You know, and um, I think we're going to... You know that's that's um that's all I really need to read, just to clarify these epistles or these letters, you know, the book of Hebrews, these letters, you know, these different letters that's throughout the Bible, the New Testament. These letters was written to the Hellenistic Jews or the um, Grecians or the Gentiles, which with the Jews that was in a Gentile state of mind. You know, we just clarify that the definition of Hellenistic and Grecian was uh, all um, Jew speaking, Jew speaking Greeks, and you know those letters only are directed to the Jews in these areas of co uh, different countries, and you know, Co um, Corinth, Antioch, Syria, Cilicia, Rome. You know, all these different countries which were where they were scattered through the diaspora, which is means scattering in Greek. Diaspora which means scattering, you know, to the to just prove that, that these these um Greeks the Grecians or Hellenistic or the um Jew speaking Greeks. I'm gonna read it out of the New Living Translation in verse twenty three. This is the letter they took with with them. This letter is for the apostle is from the apostles and the elders, your brothers in Judea and in Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, it is written to the Gentile believers in Antioch, Syria, Cilicia. Greetings. So you know, your brothers in Jerusalem. So we always see who the brothers were are um Israelites according to the flesh. You know, we just and we just went into you know 
you know, I'm going to say it again, like the Hellenistic, who are the, who are the Hellenistic. So, um, you know, those people, um, these, that, um, that, that plantation Christianity is dead, man, you know. They have no, they have no ground, man. They have nothing, um, they have nothing to base their belief on, but, um, uh, fabrications and, 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 um, vanity, you know. And, and 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 vain imagination, man. They have no, they have no doctrine. They don't, just like the scripture said, they don't speak according to this word, cause there's no light in them. Let's get that. According to this word. In Isaiah 8 and 20, and it reads, To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it's because there is no light in them. You know, there's no light. They don't walk in light. They, they in darkness. They in the gross darkness of this world, which is, uh, you know, Christianity is a, is a worldly doctrine. You can go all over the world and they preaching Christianity everywhere, you know. You know, it's, um, it's a, and it's more, it's an accepted doctrine. According to the Bible, if you preaching this word, you're going to be persecuted. You know what I'm saying? Followers of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, you're going to be persecuted. They, they, you, you see these people over here, and you know, you know, especially in, you know, great Babylon and great, this, this doctrine is accepted. That Christianity is accepted. You can do no wrong, even though. Yeah, um, you can have you could be a criminal pastor. They still look at still look at that guy like, hey, look, but he's a pastor. You know what I'm saying? They overlook everything and just throw that pastor thing out though. He ain't nothing but a false prophet. But I hope the body of Yahweh by Shimmy Yahweh Shah will edify. And I hope the video wasn't too long. I wanna say call Halayum La Yahweh by Shimmy Yahweh Shah by Shimra Kakadas. And the water the water Yahweh by Shimmy Yahweh Shah, Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shah, Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shah. And on Wah Abab Abo, on Shalawam, till next time, Yahweh Rathazah, Yahweh willing.